We've got an interesting one here today. Somebody dropped something pointy and heavy. Somebody stabbed this guitar inside the sort of cutaway uh, of this Sigma acoustic guitar. The guitar itself is well used, well loved, and it's got dents and all sorts of stuff over it. But that one's a little bit too egregious. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to a repair video. We need to keep the strings, the client doesn't want to lose those, and uh, we need to bring it back to uh, a whole instrument rather than something that has a ho hole in it. That was not very funny. Ground rules. We need to keep the strings, we need to clean her up a little bit. The main issue at hand here is this horrific puncture wound and that must have taken some serious force. Now most of the material is here. I'm hoping to be able to just push it through, push it out, clamp it up and essentially be done. Maybe a little bit of super glue finish or uh, wipe on uh, poly or something like that. But um, yeah. Wish me luck. Now as wounds go, this is pretty much the best spot for it. I've got complete access through the sound hole. It's, it's right there. Most of the material, if not all of it, is still there. I should be able to just clamp it shut if it will fold back in on itself. I could even literally just wick in some super glue and be done with it. And while the thought of that is naughty, I, I do think that's just the way to do it. Close it up, see if it closes nice and accurately. If it does, I'm going to flood it with super glue and be done. You may excoriate me in the comments. Go on there. Strings off. And it is solid rosewood uh, sides and back, I assume. It needs a fret level. Cheap fret wire and a lot of playing. We've got huge divots here and uh, I've got a phone call to make. Definitely needs a clean. Yum. Now I have access. Oh, look at that. So I need to try and It's gonna need clamping to pull it out, but that actually appears to be closing the gap entirely. It's so tight. So I am gonna need to flood it with uh, not super glue, uh, just standard wood glue. And that will give us time to uh, mess around and get the fit correct. I'm not an expert in this sort of thing. I don't do repairs on a regular basis. You guys should check out uh, uh, Ted Woodford's channel. He is uh, incredible. Uh, but yeah, should be fun. Let's see, will this actually... No, it's just, it's the wrong angle. Got access, but not where I would like it. I, I, I kind of want to be the clam. I, I kind of still want to do the super glue thing. I'm standing here second guessing myself. I, I am absolutely sure that um, 
wicking super glue would be perfectly fine. I could spend the time pushing it all out and then wick the super glue in there and it would be strong enough. It's in a, a not critical area. It's not a huge repair. All of the pieces are still physically connected to the guitar. There's still fibers and all of that jazz. Um, but, but just in case, uh, I'm not going to do that. There's also, because of all of those fibers, there's no requirement for a clamping core. So I'm just going to uh, hit it with uh, wood glue, spoot it all in there uh, using a toothpick, and um, I will push it out with, my, with me. I will be the clamp. Now, the, the main reason for this is that uh, it's something that you can or I can undo if necessary. I don't think it is going to be necessary. Now, on the central sections, I will use wicking super glue in any case. There we go. I'm going to go in with this, uh, it's a boxwood carving tool, or moulding tool, shall we say. Use that to solidify things. And let's get rid of the excess glue. Now, there's a dip there. A little bit lower there. And what I don't want to do is push the wound all the way out. So I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on here, but I'm being gentle with it. So what I've got, there's a brace, I think it's an upper transverse brace, that's getting in my way. Whew. That really could not have gone better. I'm going to use the other side of the toothpick just to pick out excess glue. And I'm going to leave this now. Okay, that's finished. There's going to be some, some messing around with the scalpel blade a little bit later to, to clean that up. And then we're going to use uh, brown super glue probably and uh, super glue in general. And that's the finish. Onwards. It's been a long day of phone calls and meetings and stuff, and this has dried perfectly. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to call that a win. Wicking super glue, just in case, and then I'm going to flood it with uh, super glue essentially as a finish, uh, just to build up the areas where the, the varnish is chipped away. Work holding is a constant problem. Uh, the ceiling is a little bit low. So um, in the soft jaws of this carver's vise, that should, that should do nicely. And here we are with a, a little bit of wicking super glue. Liable to go everywhere but we're going to be sanding down this whole area. Okay, there we go. And then I've got a, a medium thick and just a little bit of thick on the top. And I'm going to leave this to settle. Now with super glue, if you're um, worried about that sort of blooming, the white stuff when you hit it with accelerator, the trick is to leave it alone. Don't spray it for 30 seconds to a minute and then uh, hit it after that. And that tends to uh, reduce that. But uh, yeah. This is not going to be a perfect, and pretty repair. It's going to be solid, it's going to be obvious that there was something that happened, but uh, it's also <clears throat> in keeping with the rest of the guitar, and, uh, and we're good. I'm going to call that a minute.
There we go. Now I'm gonna leave this for a while. I'm gonna leave that to cure overnight and uh, seeing as my notched straight edge has gone missing at the uh, at the most recent show, I need to pick up a new one from Crimson Headquarters. I'm not prepared to do a fret level dress crown and polish without a notched straight edge now. Uh, it's possible to get an okay result without it, but an okay result isn't good enough, really. So uh, this is gonna be left, and I'm gonna go and uh, crack on with the rest of my afternoon. You don't care. You're gonna see what happens next, what happens next, next. I'm not in the mode, the YouTube mode. With the proper tools in hand, we've got a notch straight edge. It sits over the frets and allows me to read how level the actual fretboard itself is. And in this case, well, it's not very. Uh, I need to use, I've got a significant back button. Allen key, Allen key it is. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Same as everything else that you've got. Now, in this case, what you're doing is when you tighten the truss rod, you are pulling against the strings and therefore pulling the nut back down. When you loosen it, you're loosening the tension against the strings and the strings will pull the nut end up, basically. Uh, this always confuses me and it's just one of those things. Uh, now, I need to grab something to act as a lever here. I've got a small Allen key that I can't get a grip on. Yeah. Movement. Okay, so there you can see that gap, and I am tightening, well, I'm loosening the, uh, the truss rod, going anti-clockwise. Pretty much there. There's a, there's a gap underneath the, uh, the inlays. With the neck absolutely straight, I can apply permanent marker along the tops of the frets. And uh, I now know that the substrate is perfect and anything I put into the frets will then be perfect. And then when the tension uh, of the strings go on and everything, we'll have a little bit of relief and we'll have a guitar that plays infinitely better than it did when it arrived. Uh, you also don't, with rosewoods and ebonies, you don't really need to mask off the fretboard until you get to a final polishing stage if you're using a, a buffing wheel or something like that. And uh, yeah, onto a leveling beam. This is a 16 inch with a 320 grit paper on it. I support underneath the neck just so that I can feel if I'm putting too much pressure on it. And you can see the divots where the frets are low and there would be any low spots you can see where the uh, the marker is still in place and then it's on to the uh, fret rocker and i'm just sort of trying to move it around and if you hear a clicking noise it means that you've either got a low fret on one side of the three that you're on or a high fret in the middle. Obviously. There we go. Now, what that might well be is that we've got a fret that's actually not seated properly and it's gonna sort of be pushing itself up. So that's the high one. I can't see any real movement in it. But just whacking it like that has fixed the issue. Now I'm going to remark with a permanent marker and uh, just hit it again with a short leveling beam and gently see where we end up. Perfect, okay, so it was just a tiny hit. That one was uh, a little bit off, but uh, we're there. 
Now clean up and I'm going to reapply the permanent marker and use a traditional crowning file to uh, bring in an intonation point. So I want to leave a segment along the top center of each fret that is say a half a millimeter wide of untouched permanent marker. And I'm essentially turning this into a flat topped pyramid. I will round the curve in a little bit later during the sanding process. And these are very soft frets. There are many ways to get the scratches from the crowning file out of the edges of the frets. Uh, many, many ways. I'm just going to take this card scraper, wrap it in 320 grit paper, and then use that to polish the edges. And then the whole thing will be uh, buffed up through the stages with uh, fret rubbers or a Dremel or a, a buffing wheel on a grinder. There's this. There's, there's many ways. Hell, there's more ways to be invented. What's your favorite method? Let me know in the comments. And I'm still using a fretboard protector uh, to guard the fretboard. And this is where I'm putting the curve in as well. I'm just, to, just rounding it over gently. I'm now on to the fret rubbers. In this case, I'm using, uh, I'm gonna end up on the super fine and uh, use the whole rubber at an angle. And that's just bumping over each fret and polishing the edges. Uh, I'm also touching the fretboard a little bit, which is absolutely fine in this case. Remember, these are very, very fine abrasives. And finally, along with the length of the frets, just along the top. And this is going to give us frets that are shinier, more polished than the frets that come out of most guitar factories in the world. We can go even further. Time to mask off the fretboard. I'm going to be buffing using a, uh, a bench grinder and a buffing wheel and polishing compound to get the absolute best and fastest result possible. And then as I get to the bits, for example, here, where the frets are too close together, you fold the masking tape over on itself and just put it in the corner. And that's much quicker than fiddling about cutting this in half, which is something I've done in the past. Of course, you could just buy narrow masking tape. That would be the smart choice. Actually, forget that. I've got a super budget uh, car polishing device here. It came with various different pads and bits and pieces. And I actually think that this will do an admirable job. It cost about 30 quid. Uh, I'm going to put, I'm using the fine, uh, fine sponge on this, and I'm going to put some auto sole on the frets. And I think that will pretty much do it. Now it's going to be a little bit scary. But we should be all right. Do we have power? We don't have power. We have power. So I'm going to be going at this angle. And that should do it. And I'm also going to put goggles on, come to think of it. Auto solve. Oh, I love it. I love experimenting. Probably overkill on the auto solve. Just applying it like this is actually enough to get really shiny frets. Oh my. Yeah, going flat on is more difficult and it's trying to pick up the uh, uh, it's trying to pick up the, the masking tape, which is not ideal. But going from the middle of the fret to the edge, that's the technique. Yeah. 
There we go. <laughs> that was fun. All right, now just as a final thing, I've got a, a leveling file with a, 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 a sharpening strop section of leather on it, actually. And that's been impregnated with uh, uh, more of the uh, polishing compound. And the end result is super shiny frets. And I just need to clean up the fretboard a little bit and we'll be good to go. Then I go with a super fine fret rubber and I'm just making the fretboard a homogenous look. If you've had to scrape glue off a fretboard, this is a perfect way of doing it. It is mildly abrasive, but uh, the, uh, the scratch marks you, can't, you can hardly see. And it's the same as polishing it with a polishing command, really. If needed, you can go coarser and use the fine. This also works for getting a uh, particularly difficult finger gunk off a of fretboard. With that done, it's onto the fretboard restorative. This is Crimson, uh, Crimson's own formula, and uh, this does not include a bunch of uh, petroleum products. It does not off gas. It does not leave your fretboard drier a couple of days later than it actually started out. Apply. Leave for a few minutes. See whether it's soaking in or not. If it is still soaking in, apply a little bit more. It should take a couple of minutes. Rub off the excess and you're done. Beautiful. And time to put the strings back on and then get back to working on the, uh, on the former hole in the cutaway. That has now actually had two or three days to dry. It's been uh, this, this whole life got in the way of this repair, unfortunately. But uh, here we go. So now holding the string down at the first and last frets, I've got a, a chunk of relief and I'm going to use an Allen key and uh, push the truss rod back so it's fighting against the string tension. All right, I've got a tiny amount of relief now, probably a couple of sheets of paper's worth. By lowering the frets, I've also it effectively raised the height of the nut slots, of the bottom of the nut slots. So I'm going to just attack it with a set of nut slotting files, take just a couple of passes. We're talking, well, a sheet of paper's worth or so. But uh, the end result is that the guitar is already playing much nicer. And uh, we are pretty close to what the client had beforehand. Now, he, I'm going to let this settle for a bit. And when the gentleman comes in to pick her up, he's going to have a strum. We will see if we need to reduce the saddle height at all in order to get uh, the actual, the final finish, that, the, the, the action that he would prefer. But um, yeah, I'm going to let this settle and uh, move on. Well, move on to that. Uh, mess of super glue. Why don't we? Let's get scraping this excess away. I've got a tiny little luthier scraper here and uh, it's now nice and sharp. Bit of masking tape 
to raise the cutting edge just over the uh, the rest of the lacquer and uh, and we'll be good to go there we go work holdings where's the issue So that's now nice and flat. The, the height of the masking tape has uh, sorted that out really. And now I'm going to put a slight angle on the, on the scraper and just take the finish down to flush with the surrounding area. Only do this if you've got a properly sharp scraper. All right. The fairly matte finish, we're going to go 800 grit and then 1200 grit wet and dry paper. Uh, it always works better wet. And uh, also lasts longer if you keep it wet. So I'm sort of jumping the gun here a little bit. So this wound is always going to be obvious. That's fine. The point here isn't to repair uh, a perfect clean repair. It is to make the instrument whole again. We've got, uh, check it all out. There are bumps and cracks and scrapes and knocks. And this is a, this is a really well used, uh, a really, really well used guitar. Um, and uh, yeah. We're not after perfection. Look, there's a huge amount of finish uh, disappeared off there as well. So, yeah, this is par for the course and absolutely fine. If I wanted perfection, it would be a different story. Uh, we'd be spending a lot more time on this. But uh, anyway, here we go. I now need to try and match the finish, or at least uh, mat it down. Fine for it, rubber. Super fine. Uh, what is this? The ultra mega versatile multi-use guitar polish. Yeah, that works. Now, if we wanted a perfect repair, it's actually not that far off. Uh, it would just be a case of scraping away the, uh, the finish down to the bare wood, which is now perfectly solid. The, the, the white bits that we can see here, those are, that's where the, the existing lacquer is chipped. We do have wood, so underneath that. So it would just be a case of scraping it all away, sanding the wood flush, and then applying a, a coat of finish on top of there. But uh, for this guitar and in this case, it's not necessary. Also, not actually that obvious, really. The perfectionist in me would love to just go all out and make this perfect. I'm going to talk to the client. How's that? All right, there we go. For now, for now, that's where the guitar is going to end up. And uh, it is what it is. I uh, thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe. Let me know how you would do it differently uh, if you were the person doing this repair. And most importantly, uh, yeah, it makes me sort of. See you soon. Bye. So many dents.
Godhed. Cool. Well, that was fun. It's always good when you achieve something over a couple of days and it's like the whole project is done rather than a six month guitar build. That being said, though, I am attacking the hand tool only build again this week. The baritone is nearly finished, the bass is nearly finished, and the hand tool build is going to be my, my main focus. So, fun times. Big like, subscribe, have fun. See you soon.